Hi, good evening. Welcome back, guys. The uh, before starting to do streaming on my YouTube channel, because like today I have quite a few of my colleagues. I I promised them to uh, put my streaming on the YouTube so that they don't have to join the um, the Zoom communication because most of them they're they're not that ready to join the Zoom yet, but they have their cell phone all the time to watch the YouTube channel. So everything's ready. I can start. Um, so just for information, today is more like extension of last uh, last uh, last week. Last week we talked about some of the basic security codes that provided by SAP. It started with uh, ADM. Not sure if you guys still have to remember. If you go to the SAP's website, random search SAP security codes. For example, ADM nine forty. So. So these are all the public information available um, in the SAP's official website. Everybody have the permissions and can go there to take a look. Um, but one of the things that uh, some of the friends are asking me when they when they look at the course and career in the uh, the roadmap, they don't really find any new stuff related to the SAP S4 Fury. So let's go to the SAP NetWear security course again. So we go system administration, user, and securities. So that in here we can see. I'm not sure if uh, the the picture is big enough, but clearly you can see it is started from the basic SAP tech to the SM started from 900, 920, 940, 950, 960 until the security course certification test uh, CAUD sec. There's nowhere you can find anything about the latest Fury or, or S4 but the, the reality is that most of the security administrators they have to force themselves to learn some new things related to the security uh, of Fury so that today I go I just randomly go to SAP's website and I was able to find a PDF document that provided by SAP just for information this is a let me uh, scroll down this thing a little bit so this document, I would recommend everybody that interesting with the SAP S4. You see the uh, the time that it published in 2016 December. This perfectly meet the current uh, versions of SAP S4 610. And uh, this one also has a lot of information about the security of Fiori. So the first few pages, I would like to skip all of those unless you guys want to uh, want to talk about that. So basically, I will start from maybe the page of uh, 23. But before 23, I would like to give you a highlight maybe from the page 21. So this is what the Fiori uh, UX user experience the launchpad looks like. So this is what uh, today's latest SAP technology show us. So compared to the, the older or the, what we have done in the past, maybe you already know that in the first like 15 or 20 years ago, Everybody works on the SAP GUI or the very basic um, interface that I'm pretty sure today everybody still launched the SAP GUI in here, right? You go to SAP GUI and run this and that. It's very basic. And then later what happened is the SAP developed some sort of the, um, the uh, CRM sort of the web UI based. But before, uh, before the web UI, you have the web GUI that supports very basic HTML browsing. Uh, web UI started from web UI. You've noticed that uh, even some of the user with set or set new, they cannot see some of the menus uh, if they they don't have like the business role assigned. So what we talk about a business role is very similar to what we seen today in the Fiori. So I I'm pretty sure like the design principle from the SAP company, more or less they borrowed the ideas of how to control the security of um, web UI. So they introduced into the Fiori launchpad. So what happened today is very similar to the, the, the web UI. So some of the users, for example, even if you have set all, set new, and everything's traditional authorization object in the, and values in the back end, however, you're not able to see any of the, um, this kind of interface menu, or we call the, the tiles, the launch pad, the contents in there. So, <coughs> so if you go to the, <coughs> the architecture of your launch pad, um, let me see if I can able to uh, scroll down to the next one, right? So this this page 
if you look at here, this page from start from the page 23, it talks about the basic authorizations. Let me minimize this one. It talks about the, the authorization of the Fiori. So, as you know, that it says that when the user logs in, it's uh, being authorized by the username password for sure, and then by assigning a PFCG role to the user. And then the user have the access to the group catalog tiles, target mapping applications, and so on. So what these things are, when you look at this, absolutely you have no idea, including some of the experienced SAP security consultants. If they have never uh, get in touch with the Fiori application, they have no idea what these things are. So to be able to get like a straightforward uh, impression of how this thing looks like, I would like to open one of our systems. This is the one of our SAP systems, the, the, uh, S, the S4610, which is the latest uh, uh, version that SAP has provided, released uh, in last year, 2016, October. So that's why it's named as S4610. If you're going to see, see, my, see any of the role, for example, the role assigned to myself, so assigned to I mean, so to be able to uh, get these roles, and so all these things, they are the Fiori Launchpad related roles. So for example, if I look at a BR buyer, so by the way, this kind of assignment is not really ideal, this is just for demo purpose. One of the reason is, you notice that this role, for example, we assign ourselves when the comms role, then we assign all the single roles, this thing the comms role, and then all these um, standard roles are provided by SAP supported uh, the Fiori um, applications, the naming conventions always be SAP underscore BR, but honestly speaking, the way to assign to users until today is not really recommended to assign as the standard SAP roles to the user. Instead, you would like to copy a standard role to your own namespace or whatever. So I see some of the other friends, whatever. They play around with the system, create some of the Z, uh, Z roles in there. So they are exactly the same as those ones. So let's take a look at this one, SAP BR Buyer, to see what's in there. So SAP BR Buyer, as you see here, the if you are like very old days of security administrator, sorry, the, uh, what's the question in here? Uh, noise is too loud. The uh, You guys uh, hear any noise at all? But why I didn't hear any noise? Try to see that what's happening here. Noise are so loud. Do I hear any noise? I mean, you can speak. Uh, let me see the if my uh, microphone is on here. Actually, you guys, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Anybody that say, can you hear me or not? No noise. Yeah, there's a few that no, and actually in my side, I, uh, I don't see any noise because the first thing I do is in here, I do a mute all so that uh, participants, uh, they don't really, I don't know, some of the guys that have kids uh, in the background, play around, running here and there, play, and play music in there. It could make some of the noise, but however, if I mute all, the entrance, uh, there's no noise at all. But anyway, if you have any questions, you can type in here, you can uh, just speak the, to your microphones or to to your cell phones or whatever. So we are talk about this role. <coughs> so this is one of the uh, one of the roles that I select assigned to myself. So like I said, as a very experienced of uh, the uh, SAP security administrator, the first thing you may notice is that in this tab, right, the it's it's red. I mean, like this moment, I'm not sure. Like the audience is coming from a YouTube, coming from uh, all kinds of countries, and some of them like you guys that joined the online meeting. I'm not sure your knowledge level on the securities, but like the basic security uh, knowledge, like these red things, like a traditional authorization expert with something wrong in here, right? So when you click in there, you will find nothing in here. So this is like a standard SAP shipment. By all these uh, all these roles related to the Fiori Launchpad, what it provides, it only provides the things in the menu. So in here, you may notice that the, the structures menu basically is only contain two items. One is the catalog, right? The tile catalogs in here, you see the type. You always say tile catalog. The other is what? The other like this thing, it's tile group. So what do you think is? So you can see here, I go back to this screen. The user um, it have some PFG roles assigned, and you will find the groups and catalogs in there accordingly, right? So this thing, you can see the tile catalog, and this thing is the tile group. 
So to be able to find the next one, the tire and target mapping, what these two items are, you don't find anything called tiles and target mappings in there. So this is related to the configurations of Fury. So um, I can go quickly to one of the uh, window I already opened in here. So in the Fury, the launchpad in the administration, let me try to uh, refresh it. So first of all, what we're going to, to see is that this one, the catalog, it has a name in here. So the name is SAP PRC BCG Purchase Analytics. So that we go in here. So by the way, this uh, we define an ICF alias in here. So if we go to the main page, so this is called what we call Sweep Page Builder Demonstration. So by the way, the flower is like a standard SAP Fiori Launchpad logon screen. You can customize it, but uh, by default, it's just like the, the flower. The, the Fiori is just like a term of its uh, Italian languages. Fiori really means flower. So the one that we, we already look at that, that one's uh, called SAP Fiori Tire Group, right? If you look at tire groups in here, you can see it's a catalog and has a group. If you look at the tire group, if you copy paste these things in here, so I just see what the groups in here, right? You can see that this guy, this is the tire group. So, in, so which means as long as you assign this row, this row contain the tie groups to the user, the user in his Fiori launch, but he will be able to see these tiles. And then we can see the catalogs in here. <coughs> With the catalog, uh, the tie group is not sufficient. You, are, you will also need a tile catalog in here. So if I try to copy paste these things, CMD, BC, product, DSP, for example, catalog, what is a catalog? So you will be able to find, if I paste, it must be available in here. Right? Only have one. Even though it only have one. So here is a target mapping, right? But one is not a good example. I would like to find something more of that. So purchasing analytics. This one must have a lot of items in the catalog. So let's copy paste the things in here. So let's show you the how many items in there. So purchasing analytics. Right, so it has tiles, tiles. Here you find what target mapping, right? So this is what he talk about target mapping, right? Target mapping. So what is definitions in here? Um, you know what? I would like to show you how the application looks like. So the application looks like um, I have a screen in here. So this, let me see if I need to log out and log on back. So this is the Fiori Launchpad, how it looks like. So after I log in, the first page that shows up in here shows that you will see a lot of tiles laid out in here. Could be my uh, <coughs> pieces too. So by the way, the uh, one thing you notice that the, the performance of Fiori application is not only related to back-end servers, but also related to the front-end PC or laptop. One of the reasons I found that is when I start to do the streaming, you may find my um, CPU, right? The CPU is so high, 70% or whatever. It's uh, my my laptop wasn't like a new uh, new laptop, but it's good enough. It has like i7 four core CPUs and 32 gigs of memory and the fastest SSD drive. But even like that, by doing streaming, it have high CPUs in here. So let's see why this thing doesn't show up. Refresh again, <coughs> right? So this is like a very standard Fiori application that uh, <coughs> the launchpad that's showing and used by the end users. In this case, I am the end user, but unfortunately, my laptop is too slow, right? Hundred percent usage in here. At this moment, if you if you, if you try to look at the back end, right? The back end, if you find any things running, but <laughs> tell you nothing is running in here. So one thing you may notice that the uh, the performance, sometimes the end user they complain about after you launch new applications using the Fury instead of old web GUI or web UI or set GUI, they complain about the open the launch pad, the speed is very slow. One of the reason is that the one that they're using the launch pad, the one they're using cell phone, the speed is too slow. Another reason that the roles assigned to the user is too much. So one of the things you find that the uh, how many roles are assigned to myself? 
Okay, let's see how many rows I assigned to assign to myself. Not too many. So you can see in here the rows that but cannot determine by the number of rows, but should really uh, determine by the number of the catalog uh, and the catalog groups. But in here you can find that uh, when when the uh, browser start to launch, it launch all these things in one shot. So which means that if you assign yourself a lot of rows, I noticed some of the, uh, some of my friends that in in order to play around all the Fiori apps, what they do, you know what? What they do that they uh, they assign all the SAP underscore PR rows to them. I mean, end of this uh, this uh, this online uh, discussion, I wouldn't mind assigning all the SAP PR rows to myself to see how it looks like. I record is more than one hundred of these rows available, right? One hundred and zero nine available. So chances are, if I assign these things to myself, right after I save it and I uh, refresh this page it's going to take extremely long time to respond. So by the way, let's go back to the one we're talking about. Um, so what we are. So we are talking about the, uh, uh, the target mappings. So according to the PDF documents in here, the last one is the target mapping. From tile target mapping, we go to the back end applications, the front end applications, and so on. So these are the, the, um, the target mappings. So you may notice that in here, if I click any of them, for example, in here, how th how this thing can retrieve the data? Because according to SAP, uh, what is an app? Application is what? For example, you install the app in your cell phone, you install the app in your in your uh, Android pad, in your iPad. Uh, an app is nothing but just like a user experience, like a in, like a front end interface that provides you some of the pictures, some of the layouts in here and there. But this thing to be able to get retrieve the data, it must connect to the back end. So for example, if you click this one, overdue purchase order items, the trial items in there, how we get these things. How the data was retrieved, right? How this data was retrieved, it's actually by linking to here. So that one that we just click is what? Is the overdue purchase order items. You will be able to find something called overdue purchase items somewhere. Let me see, overdue something, this one, right? So this one, so the reference in here created, we are used, original, and then, let me see, reference, it reference to some other things, talking mappings, so it didn't show up in here, overdue items, so it didn't show up in here, but to be able to show something else, supplier performance, let me see what is supplier performance, uh, so, so, Purchasing spend last something days. Purchasing spend. Contract spend. So contract expiration. Contract spends. Uh, don't know somewhere. But anyway, let's show you what is here. So in the configure, it will tells you which the back end app. So URL. So this this is what. So some of the uh, like experience. Uh, but programmers, when look at their wall, this is what is this is ICF service, right? So what means is the Fiori is nothing but running on top of a ICF service. So again, like Fiori, all these new applications, they're not J2E engines. They're running purely on the ABAP engine. So when we look back here, so what is the target mapping? Map to where? So we map to the back end applications, or actually in this in this case, it's a front end. It's a, it's a front-end UI5 applications running this. So this is a very easy understand procedure or workflow or the flowchart that's showing how the theory runs or embedded into the, the security model. So what we, what we can look at is it's still binding to the traditional PFCG roles. So again, I mean, if you have zero security knowledge, I would recommend it still to go through the very beginning part, so which is the one I'm talking about, the online course, right? So the, this online course, you can start from the very beginning and then you can go here. So basically, the only requirement to understand, fully understand how the PFCG all the things works is this course, ADM 940. And then how it says launch by designer, right? So it's it's called FLPD, Launch by Designer. 
So what you can do is target, you can see contents can be configured system wide or client specific customizing. And you can use that target mapping, target catalog, and groups. So all these things we already talked about. So we go to the next one. It gives you much detail items what these things goes. So PFC rows. So it have two two parts. There's technical contents and other business content. So start from PFC rows and go into Fury Launchpad, Catalog, then App Launcher, Target Mapping, and then go here. This is very easy to understand. If I like to scroll down to the bottom, there's more complicated chart in here. So I would say that most people, when they look at this chart, they say, whoa, this is too complicated. Don't bother to even look for more of that. But I would say that it's really worth to spend some time to look in here. Why? Because one reason you can see that this is a two-layer architecture. So unlike some of you guys configure the demo systems, I know some of you, um, including these showing systems, what it does, it has the back-end system and very front-end server that install both components into the server, into the same server. How you know that? Because when you look at the install component, for example, this one is a this one is a S4610, this is considered as a S4 business system, it should be the backend system. However, this system also has the Fiori application installed, you can see here, anything that starts with this, like UIA, PFI, 70, like these three, they provide what? They provide all these functionalities from here to here. So all those roles, SAP underscore BR and the catalogs, all those things, are supplied by this thing, these three are components. And only when you try to call the, <coughs> the back applications, then it runs to the back end S4. So but again, I mean this is a standard SAP recommended configuration for most of the customers. So no wonder you can see that in the in the in the market some of the um, really production systems you don't really see any any companies they configure the back end system such as S4 or, or even the uh, ECC EH6, uh, uh, so ECC6 EH7 or EHP8, those systems as a back end, it's also possible. But most of them, like the new implementations, SAP asked them to have S4 because the, uh, the cost wasn't too much compared to the ECC6 and the new implementations. Most of them, they choose S4. And you can see here, it has color coded. In here, the blue means a UI. The gray means old data and there's the orange or the yellow stuff means authorization. And here it's very clear the UI means what it's the UI goes from here here, the menu, right? So the menu is the the UI in the front end rows. So this PFC rows front end is what we already look at. So this row, all these things, the front end provide all the UI functionalities. So when you go to the back end, it needs a catalog, group, tile, this, then there. This one, it doesn't cause anything, it's not really gray or not even yellow or orange. And here, all data service. You can find that it has a, this role, even though it doesn't contain any of the authorization objects, but in reality, you need something called related to the UI2. So normally those authorization objects start with slash UI2 something. But in here, why it works in this way? Because myself I and mean, uh, you, all the users, they have very high privileges, and also this is a demo system or the back end uh, of the that have set all or very high privileges. So this UI two or whether all these kind of things by default they all has it. And then again, go back to the to here. So all these things started with yellow. They have authorization object and authorization object value, the few values in there. So that's why when you try to click any of this, let me go back to the uh, the browser. <coughs> so when you go back to the browser, the reason you're able to see all this data because your back end authorization fulfill the requirement. Right. Right, you're able to see all the things here and there. Sort it out and then different charts. And uh, I, I know this kind of graphic chart is new to most of the traditional ABAPers or functional consultants, but 
I make sure I pretty sure that most of you you will like it after you start to implement this and especially the boss and the, the manager would like to see the dashboard. Seeing the dashboard have an overview of the, all those items instead of reading the fine details in there. And uh, let's see what's the next page talking about. So the theory architecture, consumption panel. So this are the one that we just showed in there. You can configure like uh, the column and different layer of data the way that how you present your data. So so this is everything about these documents, only like three pages talking about security. But in reality, when you try to configure all those, you will find a lot of issues in here and there. So one of the uh, examples, I will try to see because I try to help out on these existing rows to see what's the errors in there. I know that for example in here, shows an error. I'm not sure if it's really an error or it's uh, just not showing any of this actually is not an error. I would like to show you something that uh, uh, let me see, you can click anything, I can randomly click something to do some troubleshooting as an example. So purchasing, uh, translate purchasing categories. So this one is working fine, doesn't have any issues. This is some of the tiles I know that once you click, it will show you some errors. Monetary tasks, right? Unable to load data. So this is a, like a very example, very good example. I'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys, when you configure the brand new Fiori and demo system of your company as a presentation, you will find this. When once you you already assigned the roles to you, but when you click here, it shows something in here. So there's there's a few ways you can try to start the uh, the troubleshooting. One of the things that you can you can look at the browser's trace. So normally. Uh, the browser will have a trace like in this case, I'm not sure which one's uh, the Google Chrome, right? F10 or F11 or something like that. F11, F12, sorry, not F11, F12. So F12, right? In F12, the console logs will tell you something in here. So this is one thing you can find in the front end, uh, in, your, in your browsers, and that's mostly people that are doing. In here, you will find some of the information in here. But as a basis person, sometimes, or a security administrator sometimes they don't really see what the, the front end user is doing. So instead, what they have to do is that in the back end, there are two applications, there are two of the, uh, the T codes available. So it's it's either this one or this one. So for example, the chances are when you, you when you are find the errors, so they're not connected to the internet or something like that, chances are maybe this one. But in any ways, you will always would like to see what's happening here, right? So the date is, what time is it? 7.58, right? So name is very something's not available. So name some, some service is not found. So what this, what this thing is? So this thing is the old data service, right? So when you just look at the, uh, the paging here, so the old data service is sitting in here, application, infrastructure, old data adapters, connecting to UI. So what happens is that this old data service is not published. So no wonder when you click here, it could have errors. So how should I uh, publish the service? Very easy. You can go here, activate, maintain service. I mean, just too lazy because like this transactions when you type is very long. So you start with slash IWFND, right? And then maintain service. So in here, what you do is that you add a service. So, so in this case, we have the S4 and the Fiori installed in the same box. So we don't have to go to the target. So when you're here, when you try to get a service, you have a list of all the available services in here. So what you are missing is, um, let's type again, uh, IWFND. Um, So it's missing something called C underscore supplier something. C underscore supplier. Let's see if it's available in here. C underscore supplier. Right. So these two supplier task monitors by task monitor something in this per task process. So these two. So I wouldn't mind to publish all the three to see if I can end get any errors. So let's go so temporarily go to local objects. So let's see if we can get any errors. If it's too long, isn't that? So one of the things, so the first one is not able to uh, activate, but the second two, let me see these two. These two should be able to publish it. Can 
in equation too long what's going on technical names in here so this one <coughs> that was successfully and then the next one when the names too long give you warnings okay so these two are activated so when you go back in here normally what you want to check is so you want to search the one that you just uh, published it's called sorry not called this thing it's uh what's the name c supplier something See supplier <coughs> this one so when you look at this what it does is that it publishes all data service meanwhile it also activates one of your ICF service in here so in, if in here if you go to configure it will go directly to this node normally if nothing's wrong this one will get activated automatically so if you add the maintenance service in there you will always activate this ICF service at the same time so what happens is that in here if you go back Let's click this again to see if the same errors. Right now, do you see errors, right? So now you don't see errors. Now everything's working properly, but the things that we didn't have data, so then nothing shows up in here. So this provides you like a kind of very basic troubleshooting how to do all those, all those kind of things when you encounter errors in the front end. And these things that normally it's a it's a standard basis task, but sometimes the uh, functional consultant can also ask the basis well, tell them, hey, this is the issue. Can you please activate or add this service in there? And uh, another thing I want to show you is that so when we look at that, so when I definitely the first page of the Fiori Launchpad is great, it looks nice, but however, by using the computer or PC or laptop by scrolling up and down I don't really impress with all these kind of launch pad blocks and so on so to be able to do something let's show you how it looks like in a cell phone emulator so what I did is that I installed install one the cell phone emulator anyone I'm not sure if you've seen anything before it's more like a so you can do emulations of your uh, applications you can turn to a landscape in this way it become like an iPad or touchpad or Android pad but if you uh, if you rotate it to like cell phone size then it give you a very highly recommended a uh, highly the uh, um, emulator to your cell phone but this is the Android I'm not sure if there are any uh, applications that can emulate iPhone there must be but myself I'm not uh, I'm not a mobile developer so I'm not quite sure. So in here, what you can see is you would like to see the layout. So for example, this thing. So how this application, how this launch pad looks like in the in a cell phone, right? Let me see if I can refresh anything in there. <coughs> but this is another application, it's another server that we try to connect. Alright, so this is the the ultimately cell phone the how you looks like I use my mouse to scroll it up and down so in your cell phone it uh, looks something like this so when you click when you're actually using your finger to touch to press this tile then you can get into the actual business data so what how this thing is is you know for example managers are stepping out for a while and need to uh, uh, approve a PO he only have his cell phones in the hand, so what he can do is uh, go here, right? Can prove and can do a lot of things in here using his cell phone, so that he doesn't need to carry his laptop everywhere. So this could be one of the reason that SAP try to sell these ideas. And furthermore, you know nowadays everybody have a cell phone. The cell phone is the most important stuff in the in the daytime in the, in the, in the living style. And uh, I for myself, I, I would rather to forget my wallet. I will not forget my cell phone because I have. So much fun in the cell phone, I have games in there, I have the apps in there, I can have a browser in there, and the cell phone, you know, the size is bigger and bigger. <coughs> so, at this size, like a standard iPhone, what iPhone 7 size? 
and I enjoy like six inch size in here and uh, yeah it looks something like this I didn't have a chance to show you this I mean if like a KPI or the, the dashboard is showing much better in the cell phone uh, the screens in here so that's why that when uh, some of the pre-sales or salesperson going to uh, sell their IDs to the target or ask the uh, or persuade the customer to upgrade their system from a traditional SAP to the latest uh, Ferrari launch pad at the front end they will always bring their touch pad or some sort of these cell phone emulators to do the presentation to the client and the results are pretty much satisfactory and, you know the uh, nowadays everybody likes cell phone right not very really like the big bones PC or your laptop so so this is what the Fiori application looks like so in uh, so anyway um, the uh, next topic I would like to see is that so in here you're asking to how to add like a new row to see how it looks like in here it's very easy so in here what we do what we could do is in here let me see what's the row available in here so both, most of them they are purchasing and sales you don't see any finance roles okay then I would like to add myself some of the finance roles to see how it looks like By the way, this system is managed by CUA so that when you try to change, you cannot really sign assign the roles in there is gray out. But to be able to ask the provide some convenience, what we do is that we have comps roles in here. So what we do is we can add the roles in the comps roles just in case you guys never seen these techniques. So this is more like I won't say it's like a leave backdoor, but it's more like leave a convenience for our consultants they can try out. I'm pretty sure all these roles are created by the guys and Copy to something like this ZSAP. Oh, that wasn't like a bad idea. I would like to do the same. So, for example, when you have some ideas where the financial apps are, where they're located, there is. So, normally, how you go is SAP provides some sort of the. Uh, you can try to say, I'm not sure if I still have in here. Um, you can search the. There's a SAP have a website providing all the roles related to their catalog. So, if search. SAP Fiori apps. I'm pretty sure they have the like apps library, some something like this. So at this moment, I have no ideas about let's say what kind of the uh, finance roles related to Fiori. So what I go here, maybe I go by roles. I'm just guessing. I'm not an expert of finance. Just try to play around in here. So let me see account payable manager. Anything's in here. Asian analysis manager outgoing checks. I'm seeing here. So normally when you are uh, when you try to check out catalogs, when you scroll down here, let me see if this thing is for okay. So implementation information, configuration please. So this is the one I'm looking at, right? So business roles. So this thing is also named business role, but this really is a Fiori road. So SAP AP manager, for example, AP accountant, AP manager. I would like to. So this, remember again, this is the standard SAP roles. So I'll tell you how normally how a security administrator doing this type of work. So what they do is, so for example, in here, let me get out of here. Just for information, because I I'm really. Familiar with this kind of PSG stuff in my lifetime, I maybe press ten thousand or hundred thousand of this PSG in the SAP. So I, uh, I feel it's it's by nature. But any of you if not really familiar with this, I would still recommend it to take some older course, basic understanding how this thing work. <coughs> so let's see if yes, so this row exists, right? Uh, so where are so Fiori, right? So these two rows. So let's take a look at what these roles are. So again, there's menus in here, nothing's about authorization, have some user assigned. So some guys already assigned to themselves. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to assign to myself. What I'm going to do, I give you like standard ways how security mean doing this. So what we do is that we copy it to a company's namespace. For, so for example, this project name is Project Shark. I can put a Z Shark, something like that. And then maybe keep the names in here, just for your reference, copy all. Right. So in here, so in here you will be able to find exactly the same menus in here. Right. So, and when we look at the other ones, 
The other one is what? SAP AP Manager, right? You know what? I'm not going to name this one. So for example, I can even combine this row together. I would like to rename it to something else. So you could say the Accenture Account AP Accountant and, and then it says the Plus Manager. So what I'm going to do, I can combine two rows together as well. So when you're doing this, and then plus, plus what is the description of the other one is? Uh, the other one is. The other one is the manager role, right? Accountant, payable, accountant, payable or something. But is it the same? Oh, sorry, not the same. Okay, go in here, quick, and paste. Uh, manager, let's well, see the description of this thing. It must be payable manager. All right, so this thing is account payable manager. So this is account payable and then account by manager, right? So I say is this is to combine two SAP BROs. <coughs> right, so what I'm doing in here, you, what we can do, you can actually copy from other menus. Right. So I know this menu. Uh, let me see from other rows. Local. Let's paste to see how it goes. Oh, accountants, manager. Right, so we click all of this to add in there. So what it does is it just combine two together, like the easy way, so you don't have to add it manually. So in here you can find all things information in here. So try to save, save, right? So you don't even need to generate authorization because in this case we already have set all seven new in the in our profiles, so that we don't have to do anything in here. Leave it as red, fine. Leave it as not generated. So what is going here? So the row already generated. So the next step is I'm going to do is assign to myself. So as I said, they, because this system is managed by CUA, so what we're going to do is I'm going to assign to the comps rows in here. So this so let me see assign it here shop commanders in here. So try to save. Remember you have to do a user comparison. Otherwise, what happens is if you check your users, that thing may be show as red. So if we check myself, so this is more like technique is a comes rows, a single rows in here and there. So let's see in this case. Okay, that thing is not red, it's uh, it's a uh, it's green, good. Don't have to do anything in here. So this row is just assigned to myself. Let's see what it going to look like in my home screen. Would I to see if anything about the finance about the AP shows up? Refresh. I'm expecting to see some new item shows up in the launch pad. See, it's very slow. So at this moment, I would say maybe the, uh, my uh, <coughs> laptop is 100% again. Right, so if I want to see anything about the account payable, right? Account payable starts show up. Some payments here and there, account payable. Let's see, take a look, account payable, what's in there? There's nothing in there. Interesting, so what else is related to the, the one we just added in there? 
because like this one the rows are assigned too much rows in here so another thing I would like to do is that to be able to tell what is the catalog you may either looking at the look into the rows that's another way that but that takes a lot of time so for example you look into rows to check out what kind of catalogs you uh, assign to the, the the person and then you can see the catalog group type groups normally this one will have the same descriptions in the launch pad so if I look at the Paste the thing here. CBS thing. BCG AP checks. So this one will be something like this. Three items in there. If it's shown as manage outgoing checks, print payment forms, and something, like it will show something like this. Manage outgoing checks. Do we have anything about that? Another thing you can find, you can actually you can search app in here. I forgot to tell you. So the uh, so you can also if uh, like this case, if you assign yourself too many rows, then you can search in here. But for some reason, my laptop is really slow. So like I said, if you want your users to use the Fiori Launchpad, you need to make sure their laptop is strong enough. Otherwise, it's extremely slow, just like this case. Oh, finally, it sure looks up. Shows up. Not really. This is called something check. So what does it call? Managing outgoing checks. Managing outgoing checks. So this thing, right? Managing outgoing. This is when they try now. And the many out. So account payable checks. Account payable checks. So that you can also go this way as well. So this thing, right? So this thing again, it shows exactly the same issues in here. So when you look at this, so chances are there's one of the applications not published. So what you're going to do is that you can you can do it the same way, but in here maybe the app is called this thing sometimes like FAP outgoing checks. But to be able to make sure that's when normally what you do is that you do the same thing. Right, WFND error lock to see if that's really the case missing the name so right FAP outgoing checks SRV exactly the one that here is talking about so normally in this case if you are the front end users if you encounter these errors you can even tell your security administrator or the basis administrator saying that wow I'm missing this app can you please add it or publish this service add the maintenance in there so FAP outgoing checks SRV so what I'm going to do is FAP so also has some of the things FAP something there. Fine, you can go the LND maintain maintain and T. Really really hate typing this kind of thing. Well maximum reached. Maximum reach go in this one. I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the same procedure that we just done. So, for example, in local, try to find the uh, this service, and then we try to add select the service in here. Outgoing check service, right? Even the name matches perfectly. So this one successfully, and then meanwhile the other one is that FAP service payment proposal. Go this way then. P 
payment proposal. So this one also need to be added. Publish all data service. Okay, so these two things are published. So what we're going to do is that, right, when you retry, no issues, right? So right now you're able to do some of the AP stuff. But unfortunately, I'm not the uh, expert of the FICO module, so I cannot explain what, what's going to show up in here. But I was able to show you the way that, for example, you already assign yourself, or for example, you are a super duty user, you're doing 100 things, 1,000 things a day, the so chances are your boss is going to sign you so many rows in here so to be able to find the one that you like so normally you have to go here <coughs> to search right to find the apps to put the, key, the keywords in there let me see if the account payable try to find any payable nothing payable account check and some of the checks in here sales Account payable, maintain outgoing checks and checkbooks. Oh, China. So, this thing, right? So, this is the same thing again. You show the details. Some of the other things not published. FAP check book server. So, by the way, just add in there. Because I already seen the errors, so why don't I just activate this service? So normally in in a company, the uh, like this standard service you can activate it, but a lot of chance is your company have their own customizing uh, applications. So what happens that the uh, once a developer created all this this sort of um, old data service, you have to add the developer have to tell the basis administrator or security administrators chances that this added maintain service this is the, like task of a basis administrators, not really security administrators task. So what is a security admin's task? Really, it's only the PFCG case. So in this case, so what like the procedure is what happened is so for example, uh, didn't have that thing anymore. Uh, paste. So what does a security administrator do is once the service name and the catalog already being defined, so the security administrator have to create a new role. And then what he's the uh, or, or actually the person is doing, security material is doing is to add the catalogs and uh, the tile groups in here. So this tile group you see there's a there's a yellow, there's a there's a bluish, there's this icon means that it's a tile group. But meanwhile this one when you look at this, so this thing is what is tile catalog. The tile catalog and the object is pointing to the this is the what? This is the one that we just showed the catalog in the the sweep page builder the Fiori admin the page you still remember so it's something in here so you need to match the ones in here as well and this is like a mandatory task for security administrator so besides to maintain the back end authorization here and there when the task you know is that you have to maintain all these kind of menus and this thing has to be available so otherwise, the your user will not be able to see this. So let's try to see any errors. No errors. So right now you don't see any errors. Shows up in the front, the, the front end. And then to be able to get more data, you have to. Uh, well, I'm not a, I'm not a FICO expert. I cannot really produce any data because this system is not really like IDES systems. You know, IDES systems to be able to deploy into the standard um, S4 platforms. It requires a huge amount of memory because like this demo this kind of demo system is not production use but really we still have a server that's strong enough we have more than 500 gigs of memory is running all this kind of service and some of the, some of my friends are asking me hey Adam is it possible to build on my home servers running a laptop running the workstation for all servers and uh, for the s4 uh, practice and demonstration my answer is maybe not because one of the reasons that you spend that amount of money to build a servers and workstations let's say you you, you spend ten thousand US dollars to buy a server and then the memory piece not in, even enough to run the S4 and not to mention the uh, a lot of skills to be able to configure the basis piece and uh, this this part let us say today is security piece and it's not really like one person's work. Like myself, I know quite a bit of uh, basic security skills, but unfortunately, I know nothing about this functional piece. I maybe know a little bit about uh, the um, the uh, 
the FICO and a little bit about the MM purchasing, but I'm not able to even you know, like uh, open a period or those kind of things, create an, uh, an AP or create a journal. Uh, I cannot do those kind of tasks. So like I said, it's better if you really want to learn by yourself instead of engaging the project. The only thing that I can think of is to get involved into a team, like build a emulations project and work with other experts so that it's a very good chance to learn by yourself. So, any questions? No sound? No sound? Really? I thought the sound is, uh, is okay. Yeah. Any questions? No questions. It's okay, so... Uh, any any questions about the security piece? I mean, today we talk about the Fury. It's kind of new authorizations and the new things about compared to the old. Um, it's okay now. So compared to the old style security administrator. So by the way, I would like to say I would like to introduce a little bit of how the old style security administrator what their daily work is. So most of the daily works. Sorry, uh, give me a second. I need to close the door. So, um, so what is the old style security administrator doing and then what is the majority of the job market is looking for? So I can tell you the truth. So right now, 99% of security administrators, what they do is that they maintain the back end roles. I want to remind you right now, there's uh, basically two, um, two style, two streams of doing this type of work. So for example, I can sure you can write a charts in here let me open a powerpoint something like that so don't really have a whiteboard to show you guys what uh, these things are <coughs> yeah perfect so as you can see in here when you look at your company if you have a chance to look at your company's user setup for example myself so as a security means some of the company, let's say, invite you to look at their security settings of the company. So when you look at this, the first impression you have is what? See here the interaction. So chances are this company is running under the company role and the single role or the master roles, whatever the architecture. But meanwhile, there are, there are other companies. So let this case. So chances are in this case, this company, for example, is managed by CUA. So if you go to the CUA piece, so let me see if you can go to my CUA systems. I can tell you there's two major streams of how security administration doing their work. So this one. The X system things in here. Can we implement Fury for us ECC6 EHP6? So chances are, so what happened is that Fury, um, by the implementation standard, it's uh, implement in a standalone server. I wouldn't mind showing you like what is a standalone server, because we have instead instead the one that we just showing you guys the S4 and uh, and the Fury running on the same server. There's another architecture that we ju I just show you in the in the uh, in the PDF in here. So there's a there's an architecture. They're showing you like a typical company. What they're doing is the Fury is deployed or installed in a standalone front end server. So what we call is this is a Fury front end server. How it looks like? I wouldn't mind showing some things. I do have a Fury front end server in here running. So this is exactly the one that I show you the uh, the cell phone emulator. So this cell phone emulator, the one that we connected to, is exactly this two tier architecture. So what it is. Is the one that look at that the the apps running in here is running in the stand along Fury service. So if you look at that, what it should look, you can you can try to figure out so what kind of applications installed. So it's installed in the pure NetViewer seven five system, and like a raw NetViewer seven five system on top of that, what it install you using you install the apps right the UI AP whatever UI S four. So this for the the uh, S four version that 
uh, SAP published last uh, sorry in 2015. So this, is, as you can see, is this is like a standalone NetWeaver system. But if you have a chance to go through the same thing again, so activate maintain service, you will find that so for example, when you add a service, it's not local anymore. So what it points to is point to the back end systems in there. So in this case. So for example, we are going here, PRC, maybe this one, so that we can, <coughs> so you can get so it's a, what these things, where, where this coming from, coming from the back end systems. So we go to look at the back end system, I can tell you how it looks like. So in our connections in here, you find something in here, right, as a PRC, so what it points to, it points to another back end server. So in this case, this is a standalone net, uh, standalone S4 systems in here. APP one. So when you look at the components in here, this one, even though it's it's a S four system seven five or it's a this system is a S four right S four HANA fifteen eleven. But however, this one doesn't have any Fiori apps installed in there. Maybe this one has in here. Right, this one doesn't have any apps installed in here. So in theory, your question basically is can you use implement Fiori in EC6 plus EHP6? So chances are you will be able to so chances are you're going to create to set up a separate Fiori server. In this case, this one, right? You're going to build like a standalone Fiori server running on the NetVivo 74 or NetVivo 75 and then install the apps that you need. So if you go to the apps, SAP website today, they provide a lot of apps. Like these apps, what is the app? Well, you guys just look at the uh, all these, these launch palettes, palettes, and the tile catalogs. The, the, all those are coming from the apps, right? So once you install the apps, you need to retrieve the backend data. So the backend data can, of course, it, it could be retrieved your, from your backend EC6, EHP6, or EHP7. It's no problem. So that's why when we're doing configurations in here, the Fury Launchpad, it can connect to different backend systems. Some of them the S4, some of them are ECC, some of them the other system maybe could also connect CIM and so on. But again, like the, the old data service need to be published in the what we call this is the, the Fury gateway. So we met in the gateway that can connect the hook up to the other backend systems, so no issues. So basically this statement is it's not really ideal. I mean, in a production environment, nobody really doing this kind of thing. I mean, implement a theory in your backend system. No, we're doing that. But if you're asking that if you have a home or have some of the demo system and you're running EC6 and EHP6, you want to install Fury in there, yes, you are able to, but definitely not this latest version of Fury. So, like the early version of Fury, if you look at the uh, component versions in here, the, the gateway foundation, right? The gateway foundation version is the key component of the Fiori in the SAP UI as well. These two components, if you want to install into your Fiori, uh, sorry, the EC6, EHP6, you have some of the requirements of the patch level. But turns out even you're able to install, you won't be able to install the latest UI, the technologies in there. It could be the SAP UI much lower versions. And uh, <coughs> Uh, what do I say? So I will show you the how security work uh, in today's market. So you know that a lot of guys, uh, I was logging to the um, the solution manager. So so when you look at a solution manager, the role assignment, first thing you may notice is that, for example, the one that assigned a comp, so in this case, two comps row to the system. So this company, what we call is assigned by the comp row structure, right? So when the Roles, right? And method two, of course. So compare these two. So I can give you some of the examples how these things shows up. So when you look at <coughs> look at my uh, IDs in there. So for example, the one that I just locked in here, S four. So when you look at my ID here, in this case, this security model, what we call is really like I sign the comps row, so when the comps row contains, contains
contain many single rows. So how it looks like that each single row is like small piece, right? The single rows, you say the, the single rows, one, sorry, the rows, there's a lot of rows. Lot of rows. So what happens that in this way, it's, it's bring you the, um, the convenience of sine rows via comps row, but however, your single rows are too granular, it's too small. And chances are in the back end systems, you, have, you will encounter a lot of duplicate of physician object. So in this kind of design principle, chances are that t-code is unique, right? So what we call is that, so normally this thing, the t-code is unique across in all uh, rows, right? So chances are, let's say, let's say my, my uh, t-code 1, in this, in this case, for example, fb02 only exists in one rows, just for case. You know what? I'm going to create like a real example, show you how this thing goes. <coughs> right, S1. So, for example, what it does. So, this kind of things I'll show you the quickly. I mean, this kind of situations it will be never talked about in any of the SAP training course, but this is very practical. This is not anybody, the security administrator or expert, would like to discuss in public. One the reason is that that will, because when the, the, the customer wouldn't like to hear these stories, another thing is that even uh, a lot of very experienced senior security administrators, they themselves, they're not sure why they choose this security model, what's the purpose of doing so, right? Single rows, one. So, so how do things build, for example, in here? In finance perspective, for example, in here, I only add a transaction of, let's say, F110. F110 or something. So what they do is that they maintain the authorizations. Right. In here, you can play around a lot of things in here. So in this case, it's only... I don't only have F110 in here. Well, the, uh, this system, definitely nothing... Uh, something's not really right in here. I can show you why it's not right. Because it doesn't bring in the reality authorization object, FB02. Normally, this thing we also bring in your extra authorization objects. But in this case, this system is not really generated. So what, what I want to do is that I would like to generate the uh, 20, 21 or 24 or something. This is like a brand new installation, right? So this one need to be uh, <coughs> need to be do an initial setup on the order of operation because one of the reasons that each you know each transaction did have underlying operation object by the default of the systems is blank. So that you need to generate like the very basic ones. These systems are doing demo. It's like fairly new system. Nobody really configure anything in there. Loading default values. <coughs> Meanwhile, I can uh, continue talking about something here. So that's the method one. Assign the comps rows contain many single rows in there and the T codes in unique across all the rows. So what's the issues in here? So what's the good is in here? The good thing in here is the Tico is unique. So Tico won't be duplicated across all the, t all the rows. So it has very clear pictures of what kind of Tico is assigned to the user. So the best thing is the underlying authorization object is kind of out of control. So why I'm saying that, so for example, in your company, because for example, some companies have very uh, big uh, accounting department saying that senior AP specialist, account payable specialist is able to do kind of full AP access. But however, some of the junior AP access, even though they're running the same T code, but they can only access display or less harmful actions. So how that thing will be fulfilled in this kind of methods is very hard. Like I said, T code is unique, but the underlying object is different. Then this thing's going to run a while. Didn't expect that happens. You know what, maybe I go to a different system to show you the demo. Yeah, let me see if I have any uh, ECC6 uh, EHP7. 
me be the EHP and say IDES. I go IDES to show maybe it's much better. That thing is that finished? Oh, it's still running there. And IDES is what I'm going to do. I'm going to create you some of the new things. So for example in here, so this is what I'm going to tell uh, create single rows in here. So you I, I I mean if you have a chance to look at your current company settings, you'll find that some companies when if it's based on the comps row model, so chance of T in here is unique. So for example FB01, I just random typing something here and B02. Oh yeah. Maybe just put F1 in. Right. So add in here so you can see that uh, in the in the authorizations. So what do you think is going to do when the generator of the PFCG you will also bring in the underlying authorizations in there. So in the perfect world, I mean here you will design very well how these things look like. So for example you can put stars in there, but account types in here you can also choose the one you like. And based on your company's purpose, I know some of the companies that cross company uh, applications, then the choose can post to all the customer vendors, materials, and so on. So some of the companies they don't allow inter company uh, postings. They say only well, for example, only customers. So in this case, I put in here. So what happens in here? You can see that if you go to um, settings, technical names on. So chances are there's a there's a lot of fine tune applications in here so each as the work of security administrator the hard part is that you you need to determine what these activities are so for example this one right the uh, this is what we call the proposed values in here is the zero one now why do things bring in here I mean this if you guys have a chance to take the course on ADM 940 it tells you so this one's coming bring in by the proposed values in here bring it brought by FB01 but in here, so for example, you put a star in here, right? I just do it very quickly in here. Chances are you. But again, I mean, the values in here need to be determined. Like this one, it gives the full access in there. It's able to post, able to create. But chances are, let's say, if like this row, if I have some junior guys, I don't want the junior guys to post the things in via F FB01. I will only grant them display access, but they have they would like to have the access to FB01. How would I be able to do that? So in this case, we're generating this for now. So let's say this row is created, so that in here I also create something called S2, right? Single two in here, I create something in here. Right? So in here as soon as I'm going to get things in here called FB. Not sure if there's anything FB03 or something, FB04, FB05. <coughs> right, so something like this, 05, 05 hours, I'd randomly choose something. Right. I choose a lot of things. I have no idea what these things are, so let's say I choose a lot of things. But again, you notice that this one, it's not duplicated with the row we just created like that. The shark S1. It's not duplicated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on all of those authorization objects. So for example, I also keep all in there. But this one, you know, I can't have give star for example. I intend to do so. So like this one, for example, give star. I give other things in here. Right. You will, you will find that the company doing a lot of these these things in the this is the improper way right so when you generate it so for example when you try to uh, create a right create a comms rows in there and then you add a z in here you can do z shrug s1 and then Z shrug S2, right? Oh, S2 or something? Yeah, S2. So just save, right? So sometimes in the menu, they also import the menu from here. So they have both the menus in here, then they do some reorg in there. But for demo purpose, I won't do so. So to be able to do that, so 
eventually they just assign this role to somebody. But what <coughs> what's the issues in here? So when you look at that, you will find that there's a lot of duplicate authorization objects across these two roles. Do a side by side comparisons in here. So you will find that if you are if you're going this way, assign both those to a user, the authorization object will get overlap. Right, especially for the FI section. You will find that so some of this, right, they're reused. So for example, BKPF, BED in here, you give 01, 03 in here. But in here, what you did, give 01 in there. And then there are the company code, right? B, BKPF, BUK. So 123, here BAK in here, 1238. So like this kind of values, it's duplicated across all these rows. So chances are, even though your T-code is unique, you see the T-codes in here is not duplicated, right? But however, the values in here, there's a lot of duplicates, right? BUP, KSB, GSB, right? You find a lot of duplications in here and there. Right. In this activity, some of the company they even say, "Oh, I would like to give all the access in here." So what's the what's the result on this? So the result is once you assign this com zero to the end users, even though in the TCO level they're unique, but because the underlying authorization they kind of screw up. But most of the company they're doing so, so it's have a headache to clean up all these kind of things in here. So that's why there's another method that doing all these kind of um, authorizations, it just create only one single rows in there. So what they do is that they create one single rows. So for example, in this case, they create a, a one single rows. Let's show you how this thing looks like. Let me copy this one to a single row, something like that. Right, just name it separately in here. So this thing, what it's going to do is, for, so for example, it's going to copy from, again, from the other rows. Copy from that one, S2. So this, the single rows when they define it, it could be defined very precisely to control the behavior. So for example, even all these TCO, some of them they have changed access, but the things that you can, you really, you can do something here, they deactivate this one, right? You can do very precisely, I can choose this one, like a zero 01, and this one I don't want to give zero 01, I would like to put zero 03, the thing in here, and then I can put very precisely authorizations in here. Right. And then this one I may not even want like star in here, I would like to say ABC in here. Right. Something like that. So that which means that you can define very precisely in each authorization object level. And chances are in the in your company, I mean I just do it randomly in here to be able to finish all these yellow triangles. So this act deactivated things in here. I mean, for each field, you can put very precisely actions in here. So this is the daily work and really takes time for security administrators to determine and negotiate with the users to say what kind of access they need. Do you need this kind of access record type? Do you need all of these and that? And activities, do you really need to post? Do you need to create? Or maybe you just give your display only, right? So all these actions can be defined precisely. And after doing that, you generate the roles and then only this row is assigned to the user. So let's say in the future days, what happens is that saying that the user need extra access. So let's say I would like to see tables, right? For access. <coughs> Depends on the version of that we were, what? Uh, yeah. So so what happens is that so in the <coughs> so in the future days, 
let's say this user I would like to have SE16 right SE16 and something like that so what here you're going to do is you go, you can actually add SE16 ends in here so you can also assign here then you work on the authorization objects as well right you can walk in here then you can find that the SC16 and have all the things in here so that you define what kind of table so for example you're able to display a certain tables so so these belong to uh, authorization groups so let's say belong to we'll just randomly say the VA right for example right and then I allow him to change some of the tables so let's say table name is not sure of anything SD for example this one <coughs> so that means that you can define very precisely what you can do here and there deactivate so keep the old values in here and this one is new deactivate in here as well so this when the user have new requirement to add a T codes in here what you can do is that you can add into the menu right but the other way when the comments rows when the user is able to do when asking for the same thing, right? What you can do is that you can try to see if any existing role had this. So if that really and that unfortunately, I mean some of the companies, right, they don't really do the tailor tailor made what we call the tailor made roles for the users. So what happened is so some of the roles already available have SC16, right? So that's normally the case. So I'm going to build a role that have SC16 in here. So call it S3, right? Just for the curiosity. But if that's so, unfortunately, the I mean the SC163, it turns out it also have some other stuff. Let's say uh, it have a lot of things, SC16N, SC11, I put a lot of things in SC38, SC14, SC whatever, right? 37, SC18 in here. So if the comp is though is very unfortunately it had this kind of rows in here, and this row just happened to provide a lot of access in there, what happens? So the security means have a hard time to determine if this row should be assigned to the user or not assigned to the user, right? So then I just do it very quickly saying that. Well, so you have a Z shark composite row in here. So the user's requirement is that, okay, I would like to have a SE16N, SE16. So as a security administrator, you found out the Z shock, right? Z shock S3. So let's say this row have all you need, right? So add in there, so what ends up with the user will have a lot more access than he's asking for. Right? Right. So it has a lot of access that he he have all the things as extra, even though the user didn't ask him for it, right? You got what I mean, right? So the user didn't even ask him for the SE level, SE whatever, but because the way the hard comp is set up, this this TCO SE16 is unique in in the company wise. In this kind of single rows, the company could have maybe hundred or two hundred single rows in here, but you need to choose like one of the single rows assigned to the user, so it ends up with assign much more T code to this user. So what I mean is that the, like these two methods, which one's better, which one's not? Obviously, I would say for a smaller company, if you only have maybe a 100, 200 users, definitely you would like to go into method two to to design your single rows, right? You design the tailor fit, right? And but if your user is more like a very huge company, you have maybe 5,000, 10,000 users in there. So chances are you're going to the method one. So one of the reasons that they're very popular, the SAP GRC or some other third-party GRC software, they have their own mechanism to determine the composite of the any segregation of duties, any sensitive access in there. So those are based on the comps roles. <coughs> Most of them. Do you teach all the uh, authority access well understood for EIP consultant? This, this is hard to tell. I mean, the uh, the authority shared the PowerPoint for Fiori for us. So the Fiori, right, the one that I've just shown you, the the authorization, I, I, I wouldn't say that it's understood for EIP consultant, it's not really well understood. The thing is, a lot of times, you know what, how to negotiate the, uh, the activities on here, right? How to negotiate, how to determine the activities in here and there, it's very hard, it's not that easy, right? So to be able to determine, to trace back to what is missing, 
I know that none of you guys in the company have set all set new in there. So every time that when you're missing authorizations, you have to ask the security admin to do all these things. And that's actually that's a huge market. I would say some of the job is much better and then it's easy to do, but unfortunately in the market you need some guys need the patience. <coughs> the, the PowerPoint document for Phil, that's not a PowerPoint. So this document it is a PDF document. So this PDF document is it's you can you can download it from the SAP website. So this if you search the titles in here, SAP Fior user experiences for how I search it for you. Fior user period. So if I UX architecture. So this thing is you can search it's a it's a standard SAP document. You can search from their website. So just render search and go, you know, right now because Google is such a powerful search engine. SAP Fiori UX architecture for S4 PDF, right? This one. So, this document is, I mean, it's open to everyone. It doesn't really. It doesn't need a SID. The OSS IDs. Everyone's able to download it. It's in here, right? By right, December. Right. So this is when you are. We are talking about. Go. Let me see if that the same document number twenty three. Yeah. So this is the document we're talking about. So, so let's say I open a new page. We should uh, put a new thing in here. So the uh, the one that you're looking at is this one, right? So you can you can search. I know that everybody search Google. You are able to search Google as well. I'm able to find a document. You must be able to find it as well. Otherwise, it's really hard to become a consultant. You know, right now most consultants what they do they 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 work for the customers. Unlike 15, 20 years ago when I just started these kind of things, at that time it's really based on the knowledge. And uh, at the time, the search engine wasn't that powerful. Every time when you have an error message, sometimes you search Google, search Yahoo, right? It's, it's called Yahoo in, in the old days, but Yahoo right now disappeared. Uh, search Yahoo, search SP nodes, search the uh, knowledge base. You don't really find any answers. But right now, whatever errors you find out, you search Google, well, you, more or less, you will find some information. So as I said, right now, the young men, I mean, compared to our old guys, the advantage they search, yeah. Google, everybody is fair. As long as you can search, you can become consultant. That easy. And uh, yeah, that's uh, what I'm going to talk about today. The, uh, you guys still have any questions? I mean, next, 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 uh, next uh, online sections next Saturday. I may talk about something more interesting with the new S4. Maybe not really related to authorization, but related to some other stuff. I know today maybe online on the YouTube streaming, some other friends and my colleagues uh, listen to me. And uh, looking at what I'm doing, you know, in the companies I act as different uh, uh, roles. Some of the companies are doing that as a basis work. Some of the companies are doing as a security administrator. Some of the companies are doing as BAs or or as functional consultants. You know, it's uh, like a fast going world, and yourself need to train yourself as a qualified consultant. I I would imagine like like today is that everybody say SAP is great and. And maybe it's uh, in the market still growing. It really, maybe not. Because one thing of the, like I said, the fast growing world, when I, when I just talked about 15, 20 years ago, we still uh, using Google and Yahoo, right? That's on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, Google is not that big. But right now, we see you know, Apple, Google, Facebook, those things, and new, new, uh, new growing companies. And SAP, even though it's kind of stable in the past 20 years, but I cannot really say that it has bright futures in the in the next 10 or 15 years. Why? One of the reason as I already show you in the Fury the launch pad. Right? When when you look at the cell phone, when you look at this, is that really uh, impressive? Personally I don't really think so. I mean compared to other what we call a native Apple or native Android uh, apps, <laughs> that I mean, SAP this Fury uh, uh, interface is still look kind of ugly and not really organized very very well. And uh, and uh, so that's why when they asked the employees the SAP where the developers focus on, they said that developers focus on developing all these apps. 
So what happens is that these apps, meaning that all the traditional SAP GUI or web GUI apps that you are using every day right now, so chances are in the future you're going to use the launch pad and all these tiles in here and there. So that's potentially could be a huge job market. But however, like I said, is that these things really impressive? Personally, I think well maybe better, a little bit better than the, the old styles of web GUI or web UI. But overall, I'm not really impressed with this kind of technology. And furthermore, <coughs> I would like to talk about a little bit about HANA. You know, the HANA database that actually if I have HANA Studios in here running. HANA Studio, maybe I, should, I still have running. It show the, the HANA Studio. So it's basically just like a, so SAP's own database. Um, database engines. Everybody says the database engine in HANA Studio, right? The data, so except database, the HANA, it's, it's more than a database back end, but more while well, it also provides some the XSA or XS, these more applications, and it also have its embedded UI5 applications in there. So, but however, you're noticing the latest S4, the S4, the only uh, acknowledged system is the uh, the, uh, the HANA systems. The, the ECC7 in here, you can see the ECC7 right now, you can run in any back end systems. I'm pretty sure most companies, I mean, some of the uh, outside the world can run SQL Server, can run Oracle DB2, and so on. But in the S4 HANA, you may notice that one of the things that you can only run on what? Running on HANA, right? So is that is that a good thing? Uh, personally, I, I really doubt that. I mean, I, I know that SAP using this as an opportunity to, uh, right, you can see these are only running the, in, the, in the HANA, right? HANA only. Yeah, you can also use the DBA. Quick to see it. So is that really a good thing? I personally, I, I, I really doubt that. So one of the reasons that so everybody say HANA is fast and uh, and uh, running those uh, uh, reports can generate it everything a few seconds other than the overnight or a few days. But uh, if you're talking about like huge database perspective, so let's say the HANA right now, even though we claim it has the connection to big data, big data and other streaming or media uh, database. But however, compared to the traditional, let's say Oracle as an example, if you if try to acquire like very big database, I don't really see that HANA is more stable or more faster than Oracle at, at all. So this is more like a strategy of SAP, they're using the new or latest S4 technology to completely wipe out other competitors like Oracle DB2 or SQL Server so completely out of stage. So like customer like you, <coughs> And myself, for example, to serve some of the clients locally or externally. If you want to continue to, uh, let's say, be a qualified SAP consultant, yeah, HANA is a master, no. But will that, like, long go in the next 10 or 20 years or even 5 years? Hard to tell, you know. A few years ago, Oracle said already have the money and prepare the cash to purchase SAP. But who knows, SAP is a big name, but who knows, I mean, the next... Uh, next 5 years, actually, right now, the IT is fast-growing industry, I would say, in the next maybe 3 years. Well, maybe the next one is you will see dramatic change over the world. So that's my understanding. Well, right now what we can do is, I mean, I mean, can learn new things from HANA, but will that be a good future? We'll see. Hard to know. All right, so uh, so that's all for today. So thanks for staying online for one hour and a half, uh, uh, one and a half hour. And uh, look forward to see you next week. And uh, you guys still have any questions? Any question you can type or you can uh, speak. No one want to speak. Okay, then uh, thank you very much. I will uh, publish the streaming and uh, I will uh, save it as YouTube streaming for you for the future reference. Thank you very much. Have a very nice evening.